Hey everybody, Kyle Houchins, Tech and the Trainer for McNeil here, and I was working on a project recently and came across a modeling problem that I learned how to fix uh, probably 1992 or 1993 when I was originally trained on how to do 3D modeling. And I realized that it may be possible that uh, that anyone under the age of about 35 hasn't been taught this trick yet. So I figured I would show uh, the way to create single span um, recesses, pockets, and then if we looked at it the other side, we'd it would be bubbles. And the context in which I was taught this originally was um, making a, a door handle recess. And it works really well for that. But it also works if you look at it from the other side um, to make, you know, bulges, cell phone buttons, things like that. So the idea here is that um, we determine a shape. And the way that I did that is I just took a very simple curve, um, in this case a rounded rectangle, and I just projected it on to the door. And I'm going to use this as a as a guideline as opposed to a you know exact perfect perfect rule here um, the difference between using it as a guideline and using it as a perfect rule is just time and you don't want to sit here and watch me noodle this for for an hour in order to get it there so I'm gonna get it close we're gonna talk about the difference between getting it close and getting it exact and then uh, and then we can you know proceed from there the the thing that I want to you know, basically talk about is the fact that this curve is essentially going to be um, approximately the tangent point of the, the of the blend that goes from the door skin into the pocket, or if we switch it around the other way, going from the bubble or to whatever the base surface is. So I'm going to hide this curve just so it's out of the way. Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> I need the curve. I'm going to hide the door handle and get that out of the way and then we're going to switch to wireframe and we're going to go to front view and the goal here is um, we're going to start very simply with a very simple single span surface right and we know it's single span because it's only got one isoprem in each direction and in this case it's a degree one surface so if i go over here and i turn the points on which i have in my pop-up but turning the points on is over here um, you'll see that we've only got four points. That's not nearly enough to do what we want to do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is change degree, and I have a hotkey set up for that, but the command is actually change degree. And I'm going to change that from degree one to degree three, and then I'm going to change the other uh, direction to degree three as well. And we have essentially the, the building blocks that we need here. So I'm going to grab everything, and I'm going to switch to front view, and then I'm going to deselect the center points, and then I'm going to go back to perspective view, and then I'm just going to pull these points through the surface, and you can see that we have the basis of our pocket. And if I stop the demo here and I just said, that's how you do it, you could probably put together the rest of it for here. But um, I'm going to take it one step further and, and show the benefit of if we take these two surfaces and we make sure that history is on and we run the intersect command we get a line that we can use as reference. If I go to wireframe, it becomes a little bit easier to see. And the goal now is to manipulate this surface until this intersect curve matches our reference curve, right? So I'm going to lock the door skin just so it doesn't move, and I'm going to lock the curve so it doesn't move. Lock it, not hide it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just start pulling some points, and I'm going to grab select these points and then I'm gonna use the scale handle to scale equally you know one way or the other I didn't spend a whole lot of time like centering this or doing anything like that so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eyeball a lot of this and I know folks who do class A modeling for a living are probably standing on their chair screaming at the monitor saying you can't eyeball things <laughs> it's a demo calm down um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start pulling this curve to the approximate shape. And I have some nudges set up so that I can use the keyboard and bump things. And the way that nudges are set up, if we go tools options, modeling aids, nudge, um, you can see that I have the nudge keys set to be arrow keys. 
And so as I tap this, um, things will nudge. And the nudge steps here, just the nudge key alone is, is 0.1 inches, uh, control plus nudge is 0.01, and then shift plus nudge is, is 2. That's probably a little, a little violent. Maybe we go 0.25 and then say OK. And then what we can do is we can use this. Now we can just futz with it using the keyboard. And it makes it really easy to kind of dial this stuff in. And so in this case, you can see that my corners are too rounded, right? And and they're they're not they're not tight enough to what we're looking for. And so it, it's it's reasonable to assume that we might not quite have enough data to do what it is that we want to do here. And so if that's the case, then what we're going to do is simply just change degree again and add some more points that we can play with. And in this case, I'll just run change degree again. And I'm going to go to degree 5 and 5. And that's going to give us 6 points in either direction, which gives us some more points to play with. So we'll just pull these out. And you can see that that starts to tighten up a little bit. I'm going to pull these up a little bit. My corners are starting to get a little tighter, like that. And then maybe these guys come in. And we can start dialing this in a little bit. And then maybe we even need to grab this corner, and we need to pull it out in order to get that to come with us. And you know, it might not be it might be that we don't have enough points yet still. So I'm going to change degree again. And I'm going to change the degree 6 and 6. And that's going to give us even more points that we can work with. So now I can start doing things like this where I can pull this edge in. And as we get some more, you know, as we get more points, we get more control and we can start dialing this thing in a little bit. And maybe what we need to do is come out. Like that. Come out like that. And then maybe this guy comes down. And you can see that the shape starts to develop. Now, real class A people are going to look at this and go crazy because my CVs aren't lined up and all that kind of stuff. And yes, I know. We're, we're just working through some things here. So eventually what we want to do is you want to organize all this stuff. And I'm going to scale this to zero. You can see that that's starting to, to settle in. And then I can start pulling this in, and you can see that we're getting closer and closer to our curve. So I'm going to pull these guys out, pull these guys in, and the goal is to get, you know, relatively close. Um, we could spend hours futzing with this and adding points and removing points and all that kind of stuff and probably get it really dialed in, but you don't want to sit here and watch me do this for two hours. You've had to suffer through enough of my, <laughs> my hour-long and two-hour-long <laughs> videos. You don't want to sit there for this long on this one. So um, let's do this, and then these guys come out a little bit more. A little give and take. And we're going to just get about where we need to be. This comes in a little bit more. And you can see that as we adjust this, the reference curve up updates. And then eventually, you know, you'll either get bored like I do and say, good enough, or, <laughs> or you'll have somebody looking over your shoulder going, not good enough, and you'll have to keep going. But in this case, I'm going to say, good enough, and we're going to call that. So what I want to do now is evaluate, you know, the depth of the pocket and stuff like that. Say, is it, is it? You know, is it crazy deep or anything like that? And then we're going to go to the front view, right view, <laughs> front view, right view. And I'm just going to clean these guys up a little bit. I'm going to straighten those out. 
maybe we pull in just a little bit and pockets not quite that deep and then we'll go back to the front view and make sure that we haven't really blown our blown our thing out here and it looks like in this case it has a little bit so let's go grab these points and we'll scale them out a little bit just a tad bigger and you can see that we can adjust that I'm holding down shift while I'm dragging on the handle to scale everything equally and you know I, I lost a little bit of my shape so I probably need to go back and do one more little round of noodling and then probably gonna pull these guys apart a little bit more and up pull these guys in and it looks like I got a little with that depth change I got a little off my curve so I'm just going to make some more quick adjustments here I'm going to tighten these guys up a little bit. I'm going to use scale. And then nudge them down. And you can see as you adjust the individual points, it has a subtler effect on the overall shape. But the goal is to get the intersection where you want it, or at least close to it. In this case, we're going to say we're going to get close to it. That's not bad there. Something like that. I'm going to call that close enough. All right, so we take a look and we've got a nice clean little chunk of the patch or the of the surface and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these two objects and trim them. And that gives us our pocket. I'm going to hide the curves. And then I'm going to join this up and you'll see that it'll join beautifully just because it was a trim surface trim surface. And then to finish this off um, and to further enrage the class A folks who may be watching this, I'm going to just grab the blend edge here and I'm just going to roll this around. Um, blend edge, I'm just going to run it at tangency and do something like that. And we can then render this. And we'll end up with something that looks like this. Okay, very nice, very clean, very easy to manage, and, you know, nice little easy to manage pocket there, right? Making these, you know, double compound shapes like this can be really, really difficult, and I see people trying to do all sorts of crazy stuff, like doing rail revolves and trying to do patch and trying to do, you know, all this other kind of stuff. It really is as simple as just taking a surface, running intersect, checking, you know, checking what the curve looks like, and then... Um, and then you know going from there um, the the other nice thing about this let's say let's say you get this done right and you send it to the client and they print a test part and they say you can't fit your fingers behind it it's not deep enough well it's simple enough you can just hide the handle go back to wireframe we're gonna explode and then we're going to just untrim, untrim, and then we will turn on the points here, and you can simply just pull the pocket deeper. Check your, you know, you want to check your curve against your original reference, so we're going to just go re-intersect it. 
And in this case, it's a little wide. So what we need to do is grab the points in the front and we would scale them. And you can see that for the most part, it maintains its shape. We'll have to do a little adjustments, but the adjustments are easy to do, right? It's not like it's not like this is this is really like insanely difficult to try and modify this stuff. You can end up with, you know, a, a fairly simple edit to get back to what you need to do because the surfaces that you use to start with are very simple. And that's the key is to keep your point counts and stuff manageable so that when you join this stuff back up and then run your blends again, everything works smoothly. I, I'm constantly seeing models on tech where people are like, look at my model, and I'm like, wow, that is a lot of ice frames. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Rhino will do it all day long, but if you ever had to edit that thing, holy smokes, it would make you crazy. So the the goal is you know, not necessarily for all of us to be class A modelers, but to understand the principles behind modeling minimally and using only the information you need in order so that you could get, you know, nice high quality parts. And if I emap this thing, you can see that it ends up looking not so bad. Okay? So throw a little shiny one on there for you. Okay. Now, if we're going to get deep into the zebra, there's probably some improvements to be made in the blend. Actually, in this case, it's actually not bad <laughs> um, if we just crank the mesh up here. That's actually very not so bad. It actually blends in pretty nicely. All right. So... That's great. We did a good job. Um, so I hope that's useful. I hope the, you look at that and you start thinking, okay, well, yeah, this is a door pocket, but that could also be an intake for a motorcycle fairing. That could be um, a, a finger grip for, uh, you know, a piece of ceramic. It could be a, um, you know, it could be a cell phone button. It could be a, you know, whatever. I don't know. If it's dent or a bump, this is a good way to do it. Um, so if this is new to you, I hope you enjoyed it. If it's if it's something that you saw back in the 90s with me the first time, uh, enjoy your little walk down memory lane here. And, uh, and I hope it's uh, something that can end up being useful. Um, that's all I got for you today. My name is Kyle Houchins, Technic Trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Bye.